that I'm much more interested in how perception and cognition works than in referees itself. But the German Soccer Association ha has just simply asked us the simple question, yeah? uh, uh, whether a video review system would be beneficial for decisions. Yeah? And this is for a soccer association a simple question, but for a researcher quite a complicated one. And I will give you some examples why we believe that could be complicated, but we try to provide an answer. Yeah? So we say it depends on specific conditions I will give you experiments on. And I'm looking forward to at least uh, illustrate some of these. Uh, let me first start with, if you look in the, <clears throat> in the law of soccer, this is not for you to read, but it says simply, uh, the referee makes the final decision. So why do we care about technology, replays, and decisions afterwards? It also says that the laws of the game are enforced by the referee. So why should we add another person that looks at videos and makes a decision uh, or discuss or communicate a decision to the first referee? And we would have not... Uh, try to answer that question if we would have not received a lot of, of developments. For example, now a referee wears a lot of communication wireless systems. And we have now more referees uh, that are influencing the primary referee in their decision. And as you may know, goal line technology was started and now it looks like it's spreading over different continents and uh, countries. And uh, this has a lot of discussions evolved. For example, cost-benefit analysis from economy. Yeah? Does it pay off? This system costs 200,000 uh, euros per stadium in Germany. I don't know the French cost. So the question becomes how many goals are at the line and whether the referee makes the correct or incorrect choice and whether that pays off the money. And for Fraunhofer, the institute next to Cologne, this is a story, of course, that pays off. Yeah? They get millions of euro uh, to develop that system. And the same question now can be asked for video technology. How much uh, from economy, whether it pays off? But from a psychology perspective, like myself, I would say, would the decisions getting better? Yeah? Is the perception using these videos becoming better to make a good choice? And you can, of course, also ask, uh, uh, ask that question for an area like whether it will change the game, the way the referee is perceived as a person or as a group of referees. And this is something which I would like to stress also. Um, of course, media plays quite a strong role in it because they say, look, the Dutch showed it's wonderful, it works. And now, as you now know, Germany should follow the Dutch system. You know FIFA will decide next month whether some of the bids, like France, Germany, and other countries, will get a test trial for video technology development within their own leagues. So, so this seems to be unstoppable. Yeah? It seems to be that some areas want to do it, but of course later UEFA, FIFA, and many, and, and the national governments may decide in favor or not. So we as scientists, I think, have the responsibility at least to show some data and help them to make a good choice, yeah? whether to implement technology or not, given the data we have. Because this is quite new, we only have a couple of experiments I can show you today about how we test video technology, how we uh, do experiments or studies with referees, so you get an impression how we think and uh, work in this area. Let me start uh, with one uh, new book on the right side. This is a book of European colleagues and an Australian colleague. We published all the technology that is used in every sport, where referees make or umpires make decisions. And we also talk about the cognitive, perceptual, emotional components of these decisions. Yeah, and this is, to our knowledge, the first scientific book on sport officials and summaries. Also, there are a couple of studies. I will not go through all of them. I just show you one from last year, because they used 
in Cricket a video system, which roughly cost $1,100 per, per match, and they showed that uh, the decisions in, increased by 2.7%. And as you can see by the numbers, 93, 95, this is already very good compared to soccer, where you know, for example, in a, re, uh, in a paper in Nature by Raul Odeans, they showed that 20% of the offside decisions of the referee assistant are wrong decisions if you replay them on video and draw a line. Yeah, so 20% would be here, then 80% success. Here in cricket, it's already in the 90, 95%. And the improvement is 2.7%. Given per match 100,000 US dollars, the question becomes, is it worse? This author say no. They say it's better to invest directly in umpires, training, selection, professional education, professional referees, whatever you can think of to improve them. I today take a neutral stand. I'm not in favor or against one of these. I just show you our experiments, and you can judge later, given the data I show you, whether you believe video technology, given our data, should be beneficial from economic, psychological, or any other uh, level of uh, perspective. And I will mainly focus on some of the components I cannot show you all the data, but I will focus only on the perceptual part of it because it's easier to, to describe and explain. Um, this is a model we published the first time in 1999, so 17 years ago. And uh, FIFA uh, wanted to use it and UEFA for education of uh, referees. For example, we said, well, just on the early perception you can make errors. For example, in the offline situ uh, in the um, um, offside situation of an assistant referee, we know now that offline the assistant referees is not always on the line of the last man, but in average over all games one meter ten next to this line. But one meter ten for a perceptual psychologist means a lot because when I'm in this line one meter. 10 off, then I perceive you both on the same line, but if I'm here, I perceive you differently. And this is especially important if you are running and if you both are running also, and you need to have a fixed time that is the ball contact of the, the last ball played. Yeah? And this is why we can show that 20% of these offside situations are simply wrong due to early perceptual problems, and you cannot easily change them. So for example, in referees, we gave them earphones, and whenever they were off the line, we give them a noise. They didn't like that at all. But also, it was very hard for them to adapt to this line, because it was so much strong in the perceptual and the motor system that they almost could not um, be on the line of the last position. Yeah? because this is a dynamic situation. I will only talk today about perception, not so much about memory and other systems. Of course, we know a lot of, of these systems also influence the decision. For example, in the book I showed you, we summarized that referees may be influenced by the crowd noise. Referees are influenced by the home advantage. Referees are influenced even by the color of the jersey. Referees are influenced by the sequential structure of decisions. Yeah? Whether if I give you a foul, I have a tendency to compensate for the other team. If I gave you a yellow card for the foul, I have a tendency for the same foul also to give you a yellow card. And then the maximum in a Euro Cup would be 16 yellow cards in one game, yeah? because I need to follow calibration of my choices. But I will only focus first on the perceptual part today. So let's try to answer the German Soccer Association uh, question. Yeah? Can we use video technology to change decisions and whether these decisions become better? That is a simple question, and I will give you some ideas how we manipulate it. The first study was that we used videos the German Soccer Referee Association, the committee, uses to train their referees. Yeah? They present videos and they say, normally these are very ambiguous situations, so it's not a clear foul, or it's, it's very close to the penalty box line. So these kind of videos are used 
to train uh, referees to make good decisions. Yeah? They just play, display them and then they ask them, can you make a decision? We wanted to validate these videos because we have a good choice. Yeah? Expert committees say this is a foul, this is a yellow card or not, this is a penalty, but we want to use it to manipulate whether video replays changes the decision. Yeah? And in the first study I start now, this is only a pilot using soccer players, not referees, as you will see now in the next study, these are referees. Uh, we just wanted to see whether we can use it as a Dutch team to the Dutch uh, commissions to replay videos and see whether uh, decisions change. We asked three different questions for decision making. The first one is, uh, do decisions actually change? You know, if you are self-confident and you make a decision, you believe in it, you are less likely to change it, even if you see another video. Yeah? So we asked how much does it change? In normal decision-making areas, you have what we call dynamical inconsistency in decisions of almost 40%. So you are most likely also to change your preferences if you get more information, yeah? but not always. We also, of course, want to know whether decision Accuracy goes up, yeah? This is the main question of the association. But we also ask whether they are more confident in making that decision because we know confidence in psychology is related to performance. If you have a high confidence, you have a higher chance also afterwards to, uh, to improve your performance and your decision certainty, whereas if 80,000 people see on the display that this was the wrong decision, and you as a referee see that yourself, we know that this has a negative effect on performance. Yeah? So it can also have video demonstrations, can have a negative per, uh, perspective on confidence. So how, how do we do that? So here in the first study, we just used some uh, good soccer players, uh, uh, second league, third league, with some playing and visual experience in, uh, in, in, in soccer. And what we presented them were exactly the videos top referees receive. 19 videos that have controversial penalty scenes. So foul, yellow, red card, penalty or not penalty. And within these, uh, according to the law of games, um, these have been evaluated by the highest commission of the German Soccer Referee Association. So they use them for training and for deciding on, on court. That uh, also makes it uh, important that we later don't test too many German referees because they know these kind of situations. Yeah? That's why we now test more international, France and many other countries. Within the experiment, we do exactly what they asked us to. Yeah? We first show them a video in real time, then they make a decision, as they would do on the pitch. Then we also ask them about the confidence, and then in the next, we showed them twice a video replay a little bit slower than the real play because that was one of the requests we received. And then they make again a foul decision and another decision confidence. If you believe in your decisions and you have a good perspective, you may make exactly the same decision, then confidence is the same and your decision choice would not change. If anything in the replay gives you extra information, so you change your position and also your confidence could go up, then you may change it. And this is exactly what we try to test. Here is some, uh, the first point uh, I would like to make in this is that out of 19 decisions they made, only they changed 3.6. This is less than 40%, yeah? It's even less than 20%. So they didn't, they are quite confident in what they have done, but if they change, they change a little bit in favor to the improvements than to a negative solution. Yeah? So something from the video they picked up makes them to change, but most of the decisions remain the same. If they receive twice the same situation with a little bit slow motion. In data, the number of correct decisions do increase by roughly two out of 19. Of course, if these are two penalty decisions, this matters. Yeah? If this is just somewhere in the game, two decisions, wrong or not, would not make a huge difference in the total game. So yes, this seems to be at least uh, one way to say that the 
that in the red bars, this is the real time display, the first decision, but with some a repetition of slow motion, they seem to improve. So something of the information can be used from the replay to make a better decision. As I said, less than two out of 19, and uh, as you will see later, this is, ha has um, impact, especially for the penalty decisions. If you just look at the confidence scores, this is the right figure, you will see that as you would expect, if you improve in performance, also your confidence goes up. If your confidence goes up, also your performance. Yeah? This is now correlational, but uh, what is shown here is also on a six scale, you have at least one score more to be confident after re your replay, because you have received more information, even it's uh, identical information, just in slow motion, and that is, makes you confident. Okay. Now let's go to the referees. This was just to validate, yes, video slow motion can help. Potentially these are soccer players, so we don't know whether this also applies to referees. So now we go to studies in which we actually tested referees. Uh, this time we used 109 referees, and we didn't use uh, Germans too much, only as a control, because we wanted to have 12 uh, international referees uh, from different countries and uh, another, uh, a couple of national referees because this is actually the level of the videos where they need to make judgments. Yeah? These are uh, World Cup, European Cup or Premier League uh, decisions and most of them are semi-professional referees. Some of them in 10 years earn half a million euro, so per game 5,000, 10 uh, 5,000 a month, yeah, depends on the years. I know that was very different in earlier years than today. But you get an idea, this is quite a distribution of expertise and long-term international or national level. So we showed them exactly the same videos from the German Association, but we manipulated now things from our perceptual cognitive psychology, which we think matters for making a decision, and I just give you some of these examples now. Uh, in the DS, in the second design now, we compared again real time and slow motion. So, would it make a difference if you replay the same situation in exactly the same speed, or whether you slow down the movement? Yeah, do you make better decisions? Because that's maybe important how you present the replay at the end of. Of, of a decision. The second uh, is aspect is viewing perspectives. We had a camera from the side, from above, and uh, from almost the perspective of the referee. And because we thought, okay, there are so many cameras, which one to choose to present the referee a situation in which he or she can make a choice. And we also know from decision making that the number of repetitions have a crucial influence on your confidence and whether you trust your own decisions. Yeah? So that's why we not only use two repetitions, but four, because some theoretical arguments say this is a linear trend, you're getting more and more confident, you're getting more and more precise. And there are other groups who believe this is an inverted U-curve. Yeah? You get a little bit better and your confidence goes up, but if you see more and more, you're becoming more unsure. You go down back in your choice and in your confidence. Yeah? So we wanted to test all these parameters. I just show you not the combination of all these parameters, but just now data on each of these factors in individual conditions we manipulated. Yeah? So to make the story a little bit easier. On the left side, you see decision performance for different repetitions of the same viewing. Yeah? So the same video was either showed once in the second, we asked them about their decision. In the third viewing, they asked it. This is all real time, yeah? no slow motion in it. And as you can see, they are not so good like the cricket ones because these are ambiguous situations. They have a success rate of roughly 65 to 70%. But if they looked at the third time in the same video, they seem to make some, they get some extra information to make at least some 5% better decisions. However, if they see it again, this doesn't influence it. On the right side, you only see those decisions 
that are resulting in penalties. So this is very important decisions, yeah, because the penalty can change the outcome of a game much more. And as you can see there, their performance is much higher, 10% higher than uh, for all decisions. But also, again, in the third viewing, they seem to be becoming a little bit stronger in their choice quality, and it doesn't matter if they see it a fourth time or not. So it looks like, yes, how often you see it does matter. It's not just one time or so, but it looks like there is a distribution, and it looks like a little bit more curve linear than it always goes up. We haven't tested it now for five, six, or seven, so we don't know whether that will change if we do it for longer. Second, if you look for confidence, as we would predict, if performance goes up, confidence goes up, but if you can compare to our first study, these are top-level referees. They have a high confidence. They don't change a lot, but it's still at least a significant, meaningful change in, in confidence, but on a scale from one to six, it doesn't really matter if you cross four or 4.2 or 4.5. Yeah? So it's roughly the same confidence, gets a little bit higher, but not too much. Yeah? So confidence seems to be not equally changing than performance. Also, now looking for the next, um, for some reason, the mouse. Um, looking now for decision accuracy, real time versus slow motion. On the left side, again, this is the decision accuracy in percentage for real time, where they're showing videos in slow motion. Again, a 5% improvement. So there is something in the slow motion that changes their decision to the positive way. Because slow motion could also change the movement you perceive, and you may perceive it in a wrong way. Yeah? So you perceive it in a way that you think this was not a foul because by slow motion it doesn't look like, but it looks like here from this rating, slow motion does pay off. And this is as, as well true for only those choices on the right side where penalties decisions are involved. Yeah? So it may matter to replay also in slow motion, not only the number of replays, but also real time and slow motion in combination seems to pay off at least by 5%. And uh, the last uh, thing was viewing perspectives. This was an experiment in which we changed three different video perspectives. And the perspective C is the one which is closest to the perspective of the referee on the court. Yeah? Of course, a little bit behind because you could not display it on the court, but you could zoom in and try to mirror as much as possible this situation. And therefore, it looks like that they are much more familiar with that, and so they can make good choices compared to an eagle view from the above or from the side, like in perspective B. You can also see that that again matters for decision accuracy for the penalty decisions. So on the right side, if you see it from the side, it looks like your decisions go down at least by something like 8 or 10 percent. So yes, it's not only how often you show something, it's not only how you show it, slow motion or real time, but it also seems to matter where the camera is positioned. Yeah? So it's not just video technology to use or not to use, but all these components to some degree matter for the final confidence, change of your decision, and decision accuracy. So this is uh, something that makes the answer a little bit more complicated than saying, yeah, we are in favor of it or we are against video technology. Yeah? So it really depends on a couple of factors that we need to consider. Ah, now it works again. Uh, Confidence, roughly as I showed you before, for perspectives, the one they are familiar with, the one close to their own perspective, number C, seems to be much more accepted, but confidence scores are quite high. They are always confident, and some of them are even overconfident, so they think they make m much better decisions than actually the evaluation is. But this is, for psychologists, overconfidence is not only negative. Yeah? This has, for goal setting, overconfidence is good. Yeah? So that's why we don't see that as negative if they 
are more confident actually than their own performance uh, can be presented. But as you can see, there are some slight differences. Even as I said, it's significant. Most of the differences are not so large given they are already on a high level of confidence. Let me summarize just the perceptual points. First, I argued, yes, in study one, soccer players do change in their judgments and their confidence, but we don't know whether that refers to referees. That's why we did in, in study two slow motion perspectives and also the number of repetitions. And all of these factors at least moderate the decisions, sometimes by 5%, sometimes by 10%. If it's on penalties, it matters. If it's somewhere in the midfield, it may not matter so much. So it really depends what kind of uh, video foul or decision you need to make. So you could say these preliminary results support technology use if you use it appropriate. Yeah? If you use it with the right cam camera perspective, if you use it uh, often enough, if you use it for, um, with real time and slow motion, then you could argue this is why we should do it. However, there are also some slow motion critical studies showing that if you do either the same speed, slow motion by 10%, 20%, 30%, or you do the opposite, you speed up the video by 1.2% and so on, you can also show that decisions also dramatically change. And sometimes slow motion um, in these studies from Lorraine and others uh, even show lower performance, but this was only studied in athletes and in, in players, not yet in referees. So we don't know exactly what is the correct slow motion speed, what is the correct number of repetitions, and the best video perspective to optimize the decisions of referees. And of course, you can discuss it in economic, in does it change the, the law of the game, do we need to change the FIFA rules? What is the social perception of the referee if somebody else in the basement looks on a video and makes a decision? So all these kind of things can be discussed. I just totally, uh, today I only showed you the perceptual analysis of these manipulations. Yeah? And there are some groups, uh, in, for example, in Belgium, in Germany, and elsewhere, said don't invest this money. Go for a better selection of coaches, go for better training of videos with these uh, referees, and uh, that would also increase their decision accuracy. And they show data training referees for six weeks in perception to show them that their choices become better because they receive cues where to look at. Yeah? And they received a specific decision-making protocol in which they became better. So maybe the video technology is just one alternative to many others, like training. Uh, I may also mention that we have uh, data, without now going in all these uh, experiments, um, from one of our groups in, in my lab that shows that also you can improve the death perception. So if you don't train people with 2D images, like a video displayed here, but if you train them with three-dimensional information for six weeks, twice uh, a week at training, what you can show is that this death perception improves, like you may have experience in your video in, in a cinema if you have this 3D uh, vision. And that can also improve decisions only for those uh, components where death um, perception is important. For example, off-site decisions, yeah, where death is quite important. Or other decisions, whether this foul was before or after the penalty box. For these kind of decisions, 3D dimension may matter. And one of our researchers, uh, Dr. Tanja Hohmann, just published papers on how much the difference in decision making is between two-dimensional and three-dimensional video training. Yeah? So that could be an alternative to, to these kind of uh, programs. Finally, um, I would also like to mention that in our group there are some people who are not working on perception cognition, like I talked about, yeah, how perception changes your judgment, but some 
also looked on perception and action. And what they have done, for example, Alexandra Pissera, one of our re uh, postdoc researchers, what they did is they used referees and they trained them on the pitch to foul each other. So they fouled and they cry like the, the soccer players and they try to train the motor system and then later they compared their judgments on these videos whether they had a motor training, whether they have a perceptual training, like the regular perceptual training, or whether they used the training of the official referee association, that is showing videos, showing this is an error, this is not an error. And it was interestingly that those referees who are trained to foul each other, that they make better perceptual judgments. One of the reasons, because your own experience of your own uh, um, system can inform also the perception. And uh, they, because they found out that a lot of soccer players just make this cry and jump, but normally if you're hit, you rather touch and you rather want uh, to secure yourself. Yeah? So they've received cues, information to make better judgments. And this is a, a totally different story to train people. Yeah? And the last thing I would like to uh, address in this research group is that there are now headphones like this, and they have a longer, stronger uh, um, headband. And if you turn them around, you have a video display. So you can, a referee could directly see the video replay of what he just have seen in reality. I'm not sure if you want in soccer to have referees doing this and then look like this uh, on the court and everybody is around. Yeah? But that would be an alternative to get people uh, to another assistant referee running off the field like you see that in American uh, football or ice hockey, hockey, or whether you want to do it like in volleyball where there's also a video re replay by a, a second uh, assistant, but everybody sees this in, in the stadium, in television. Yeah? So there are many options of how to use video technology. As a cognitive psychologist, I believe in changes in people. Yeah? So training and selection, I think, is a good method. So I would always bet my money not on a computer system, but on how to improve decision making. But I know for economists and for uh, associations, this is a totally different story. Yeah? So take it as my personal uh, story. Thanks for your attention. Mm -hmm.